Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Brett's All Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lion Bay. Thank you for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home overlooking the beautiful Lime Bay here on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Now then, uh, please do feel free to give us any feedback on Dad's Iron Me episode that we played on Friday, because obviously I'm really keen to know your thoughts on it. It's a brand new show. We've not done a new show in ages. My phone's dinging away, but I don't really understand why. Oh, yes, I do. We're planning a trip to Orlando and we've got a family group because we're going as a family. And Vic has been basically getting everything organized and sorting it all out. And it, we're dinging away. And that's a, the problem is when people add you to a group, you, you just become a passenger, really, don't you? You know what I mean. Got a Facebook page, an Instagram page, and a YouTube channel. They're all called Brett's All Time Radio Show. Please check them out and check out our supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Brett's All Time Radio Show. Time now for our latest adventure with Simon Templer and the Saint. This one was first broadcast on the 20th of May, 1951. It's called The Red Rose. The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charters and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Would you like some more coffee, madam? No, thank you, Chester. Excuse me, I'll see who's at the door. Coming. Chester. I answered the doorbell, madam. But who is it? No one, madam. That's silly, someone rang. Someone rang, madam, but you see, there's no one at the door, no one at all. I suppose it could have been children playing pranks. Perhaps so, madam. Then shut the door. Chester. Yes, madam. Uh, at your feet on the doorstep. Oh, well, it seems to be a package of some sort. Pick it up. Yes, madam. Don't give it to me. I... I'm sorry, Chester, but shut the door. Come along. In here. Now, open that package. Yes, madam. Well, haven't you finished yet? In a moment. There. What is it? You have only to look, madam. What is it? And nothing important, madam. Only a red rose. A red rose? Oh. <laughs> Mr. Templer, how do you find the roast of beef? Huh? Very easily. <laughs> <laughs> you make the joke. You make the joke. I laugh. I laugh for Mrs. Martucci. She's a very happy. Oh, who is Mrs. Martucci? That's my wife. Well, I'm glad I make your wife happy. Perhaps when we get around to the dessert, I can make your children happy, too. I uh, no got the children. Oh, that's too bad. But perhaps by the time we get around to the dessert, I... No, not enough time. However... Uh, Mr. Templer, you are maybe expected a lady. Well, I always hope, but uh, what lady? The one that she's over on the corner table with very beautiful eyes. Mm, corner table. Yeah. <laughs> now that you mention it, you're quite right. <laughs> she has lovely eyes. But I wasn't expecting her, not until Christmas at any rate. She's a watch you all through the dinner. Mm, perhaps there's something fascinating about the back of my neck. It must be so. Because now the lady she's get up. And where do you think she comes? To this table? Yes. Hmm, well, goodbye, Tony. Huh? Oh, I take it in. The goodbye, Mr. Temple. I beg your pardon, but you are Simon Temple, aren't you? Yes, I am. May I sit down? Of course. I'm Laura Kane. How do you do? Would you like something to drink? No, thank you. A drink wouldn't help. Oh, well, perhaps I could. I'm pretty desperate. And very beautiful. Thank you. But you didn't come to my table to hear me say that. No, Mr. Templer. You see, I know about you. It's probably an exaggeration. You're the saint. Yes, it is an exaggeration. And I need help desperately. Help about what? Mr. Templer, look. And I think for a couple of reasons you'd better specify what I'm to look at. Oh, at my shoulder. 
My left shoulder. Very pretty. There's a red rose pinned to it. That's what I need help about. The rose? And I know very little about flowers, except that they're beautiful and are very often sent to beautiful women. By someone who never sends his name? By someone who sees to it that they're delivered secretly with no word at night? Well, that is rather unusual. It frightens me. Well, perhaps the roses are sent by an admirer of yours, a very shy admirer. I thought that at first, but not anymore. No matter how shy a man might be, it's not easy for anyone to sneak into a house night after night, unseen, unheard. It can't be shyness. Well, perhaps not. It takes cunning, determination. There's more, too. Yes? My first husband was killed a number of years ago. The police never found out who killed him. When his body was found, Mr. Templer, there was a red rose pinned to his shoulder. Mr. Templer. Yes? Do you think I'm being hysterical about this? I I mean, am I attaching too much importance to something that might be harmless? I don't know. Too many unknown factors. You married again, didn't you? Yes, to Henry. Last year. Did he know about your first husband? Of course. Your husband's at home? No, which isn't unusual. Oh? He's away most of the time. He likes to travel. Climb mountains and things like that. And you? I don't like climbing mountains much. How about your husband? I don't like him much, either. I see. Do you? He's very rich. I suppose in view of your sentiments, he'd have to be. And he is away a lot, so... There are servants? Well, only Chester, the butler. Does he know about the roses? He knows I've been getting them. I don't think he knows about their connection with my first husband, which is just as well. I don't think he admires me. Then why do you keep him on? Henry insists. Henry's very much attached to Chester. And Chester makes a good watchdog. This is where I live. Uh, It's a large house. You're being kind. It's not only large, it's horrible. It's belonged to Henry's family for hundreds and hundreds of years. I sometimes get the feeling all of them are still living in it, with us. Uh, No lights in the house. No, Chester likes to go to bed early. And he's careful about saving Henry's money, as well as his reputation. He always goes about turning lights off. You must make the house a very cheery place. Yes, it does. As cheery as a tomb. I... You know, I'm afraid to go in. Why not ring? Chester wouldn't like being waked. You asked me to come home with you because you were afraid your unknown admirer, the man who's been sending you the roses, might be waiting for you. Well, I could go in alone no, and... I'm being silly. The light switch is to your right, Simon. Right. Anyway, there's no one in the foyer. I'm I'm counting my blessings as they come along. Where are the roses usually left? Sometimes on the doorstep. Mostly, though, in the living room. On a table there. Then suppose we try the living room. Yes. Wait. The lamp's right near the door. I'll get it. Nothing on the table. No roses. No roses, but Mrs. Kane. What? On the couch, the far corner. Flowers are there? They never. They... Henry. Stay where you are, Mrs. Kane. Oh, please, Mr. Templer. Please tell me he's all right. I'm afraid I can't, Mrs. Kane. <laughs> yes, yes. There's a knife buried in his chest. He's dead. Oh, no. Henry. Henry. Yes, I know, Mrs. Kane. Your husband is holding a red rose. Hey, Mr. Templer, come over here. All right. We uh, want to be alone? If I don't break this case, I'm liable to wind up being alone someplace out in Staten Island. Uh, Kane was a very rich boy. Very rich don't like to get murdered. Unlike the poor, you mean. The same difference, except around dumps like this, a cop's got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Now, look, Templer, we got your story on the babes. Mrs. Kane is a very beautiful, and need I remind you, a very wealthy woman. She's a babe. We got your stories translated. That means we got a couple of pages of nothing. Now, did you happen to know that her first husband got himself knocked off, too? I didn't happen to know. She told me. I suppose maybe that's a mark in her favor, but, uh... How do you like the butler, Chester? Well, I, I don't know. I never met him. I mean as a suspect. I never like butlers as suspects. 
old-fashioned. He lives here. Except he don't seem to be living here anymore. Uh, it makes sense to me, whatever it does to you. Now, the thing I'm worried about is, was his disappearance a coincidence? Or would it be because he stuck the knife in the boss? I wouldn't know. Of course, if we figure him for the killing, it would make everybody very happy. Except Chester. Yeah. Well, we'll find him. Well, nothing more to do around here, so I guess I'll pull the boys out, go back to my pinochle game. Hey, you staying on? Mm, for a while. You uh, think the widow needs consolation? Lieutenant, you are a cad. Look, nobody ever confused me with a gentleman. Anybody ever confuse you with a saint? Well, it's nice of you to even consider the possibility. Uh, 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 good night, then. All right, boys. We go home. Good night, Simon. I'm still here. It was nice of you to stay, and the police were very nice. Too. Why not get to bed now? Hmm? There's nothing to be done tonight. Simon, do they really think Chester killed my husband? Do you? No. Chester would never have harmed Henry. Well, that leaves Chester with a job on his hands explaining his disappearance. But that's his problem. I suppose. I am tired, Simon. Well, I'll go. But, Laura... Yes? I don't think he'll show up. I'm not talking about Chester. He? What do you mean? Well, you've been waiting for someone all evening. Every time the front door opened, even though the police were here, you grew tense, expectant. It was fairly obvious, Laura. You're imagining things. All right. Perhaps I... Good night. Good night, Simon. And thanks for everything. Well, I didn't do anything... I wish I could have prevented... I know. Try and get some sleep. Hmm? I'll phone in the morning. Thank you, Simon. Hi, Mr. Templin. Oh, hello, Joe. Lieutenant left you on guard, huh? Yeah. Me, I'd be happier was I inside. Oh, the weather out here? No, the lady in there. Well, that's life. And practically in the raw, too. <laughs> oh, good night. Good night. Templer. Mr. Templer. What? Uh, quick, get in the car. Do hurry. Oh, all right. Of course, I might be walking into the lion's den. Good heavens, do I look like a lion? No, no. Much more like a lamb. Uh, so I've been told. Uh, uh, better, much better. What are you? Getting away from that dreadful house. I never could stand the architecture. Deplorable. Yeah, not to mention the policeman out front. Uh. Please, that's not. All right. Uh, Mr. Templer, you're quite a detective, aren't you? But not exactly a detective. I... But you do detect every once in a while, uh, don't you? When I can't help myself. Why? Well, you see, I drove up to the house and noticed hordes, but hordes, of policemen outside. I'd been expecting to drop in on Laura and, and uh, share a cup of tea, but there... Well, champagne would seem to be more in Laura's line. Well, I don't mind a bit of wine myself, you know. However, <laughs> I'm babbling. Uh, wh what I mean to say is, with all those policemen around, I thought it hardly wise to visit, um, you know. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been terribly rude. Uh, my name's Gordon Ashenden. Uh, my friends call me uh, Gordy. Well, I'll try to resist. But you haven't told me yet. Whatever has happened. Where? At dear Laura's, of course. Well, it's dear Henry's, too, you know. What is? Dear Laura's house. Oh. Well, yes, of course. But why think of nasty things? Because they've become even nastier. What on earth are you trying to say? Dear Henry is dead. Well, it's most distressing, of course, but... Dear Henry is not only dead, he was murdered. Oh, dear. Laura shouldn't have... Uh, oh, uh, that is... What makes you think Laura did? I, I didn't say. I, I, I do not think that uh, Laura did anything of the sort. I... Uh, oh, I just remembered a terribly important engagement. You will excuse me, won't you? Uh, you can get a cab right at the corner. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Ashenden. Yes? That engagement you just remembered... What about it? I'd be very careful keeping it. Oh, nonsense. It's a business engagement might be the making of me. Perhaps. On the other hand, it might be the death of you. Alexander Graham Bell, you may roast. Hello. Mr. Templer? Mr. Simon Templer? Are you satisfying a morbid curiosity or addicted to practical jokes? I realize it's very late, sir, but... I'm Chester, Mr. Templer. Chester? The butler? Yes, sir. The police, I'm afraid, are more interested in you than I am. I don't dare go to them. Why not? They must think I murdered Mr. Kane. Did you? Of course not. Well, then why didn't you stay at the house? Because the murderer was there. The murderer being... I, I didn't see him. I heard Mr. Kane cry out and then horrible sounds. 
Then I heard steps coming toward me. So you ran? Yes, sir. Well, why have you called me? Because I knew Mrs. Kane had spoken to you about the roses. How did you know that? Well, she... She told me she was going to. Tell you, that is. What do you want me to do? Help me. Prove my innocence. Well, then you'd better come here. Oh, I can't. I'm afraid to leave. Where are you? Mr. Kane had a small hunting lodge. That's where I am. It's on Cressley Road, just across the George Washington Bridge, off Highway 12. I don't dare come into the city, Mr. Templer. Well, I see, but... You've got to help me. I don't want to be murdered. All right, then I'll be out there as soon as I can. Thank you, sir. Please hurry. I'd like to be alive when you come. Mr. Templer. Yes, Louis? So you explained everything, but it still don't seem right. In the middle of the night, nobody takes a taxi to New Jersey. But I have. Yeah, that's what bothers me. Also, it's my taxi. You know something? It's dark in New Jersey. Well, that happens in New York, too. Yeah, but it's more like home there. Here, it don't make me feel good. You're not supposed to feel good. We're on our way to help a man whose life may be in danger. Oh, now I feel worse. Look, this butler, Chester. Supposing he killed Mr. Kane himself. So from whom would he be in danger from? But he may not have killed Kane, Louie. So then let him stay in New Jersey. No, no. no. He was in the house when Kane was murdered. Yeah, but he didn't see the killer, if he's telling the truth. That's right, Louie, except the killer may not know that. This here is the place. Yes. Cabin set back from the road. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Oh, I, I should have brought my elephant gun. If I had an elephant gun. Mm, but we're not hunting elephants. It could be a lot safer than what we're doing. Quiet huh? enough. Don't complain, Mr. Temple, please. The sounds you're liable to hear out in this wilderness are not sounds I want to hear. The lights in the cabin, eh? Well, maybe uh, Chester went to Pennsylvania. <laughs> hey, Mr. Temple, it's a joke. See, there's a town in Pennsylvania called Chester. Yeah. All right, maybe it wasn't a joke. No, it is. Yeah. I'd let you hear my teeth chatter. You want to knock? Of course. Who, who's there? Simon Tempter, Chester. Yeah, and Louie. And Louie. Come in, please, quickly. I haven't dared put the lights on in this room. It, it faces the road. Will you come with me? Oh, I shouldn't have had the lights on here in the kitchen either, but I was afraid to wait in the dark. Is anyone likely to suspect you may have come here? I, I don't know. I, I can't even think, Mr. Temple. You're sure you don't know who killed Mr. Kane? No, I don't. If I did, I could have gone to the police and been safe. This way... Chester, uh, Mr. Kane was very wealthy, wasn't he? Yes, sir. And Mrs. Kane? Well, she was married to Mr. Kane, so... I meant in her own right. I don't think so, sir. Kane wasn't home very much of the time, was he? No, sir. Why? Well, he wasn't really happy in his marriage. He could have divorced his wife. Well, not Mr. Kane, sir. He couldn't have endured the scandal. I see. Chester, that name you can't think of, the killer's name, could it possibly be Gordon Ashenden? I don't know. What does Mr. Ashenden do besides have tea with Mrs. Kane? He raises flowers, sir. He has a conservatory out on Long Island. That's interesting. Among those flowers, could there possibly be roses? Roses, sir? Yes, you know what they are. Well, of course, sir. Well, then suppose you answer my question. Well, I, I should imagine he raised roses, sir. Chester. Yes, sir? I'm having unkind thoughts about you. What do you mean, Mr. Templer? I think, for example, that you know who killed Mr. Kane. Oh, no. I think also that your original intention was to keep quiet about that knowledge until the case had been closed as unsolved. Now, what? Why would I do a thing like that? It's an ugly word, Chester, but I'm afraid I'll have to use it. Blackmail. Oh, that, that's ridiculous. No. For an innocent man, there's no explanation of your behavior that holds water. I was afraid. Mr. Kane was knifed to death. The room in which he died showed no signs of struggle. Therefore, you couldn't have heard the murder. You must have seen it. No, sir. Your I... story about fleeing from mysterious footsteps is childish. According to your own story, you had no way of knowing whose they were, or even who had been killed. An honest man in your circumstances would simply have run out into the street and yelled for help. You didn't. Now, who killed Mr. Kane, Chester? I don't know. Or would you prefer dying alongside the murderer as an accessory after the fact? Very well, sir. I did see you. Wait, it's that window. 
Chester, you're near the lamp. Turn it off. What? Turn it off. Oh, no! He, he, he didn't turn it off. No, a bullet did it for him. It came through that window. We can find the door in this confounded darkness. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Oh, oh, there goes a the car. Kill his car. We're too late, Louis. Come on, let's go back in. Yeah. There's another lamp around. Louis, strike a match, please. Uh, okay, Mr. Temple. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Mr. Temple? I know, Louis. Two of the bullets hit him. Oh. Ain't gonna bottle no more, huh? No. His second murder scene in two days. But in this one, he played the title role. Hey, you know, Mr. Templer and New Jersey cops wasn't bad. You know, if I'd have shut my eyes, I could almost have imagined there was New York cops. Just goes to show you. To show you what? That crossing a river don't change a cop. I'm taking you home? No, Louis. <laughs> Mrs. Kane. If you don't mind. I mind. Look, Mr. Templer, maybe she's beautiful. But right now, I could easily spring even Helen of Troy. Even. And from what I hear from the boy, she was the all-time tomato. You hear right. How do you know? You was around while she was still on the vine. Louie. Yeah? We're passing Mrs. Kane's house. Oh! Oh, there's a cop outside the house. Oh, so there is. Wait for me, Louie. I'll wait. Hey, you! Oh, well, Mr. Templer. Hello again, Joe. Like to see Mrs. Kane. Uh, so would I. I. I mean, at this hour? Well, does she turn invisible at certain hours? Oh, how do I know she wants to see you? Well, you might try asking her. Huh? Okay, you wait here. Why? Well, that way I get to see her, too. Hey! You know something? I'm afraid I do. She's gone. That's right, but how did... Did I know? I guess. She shouldn't have ducked out. I'm supposed to protect her. Hey, hey, Mr. Templer, where are you going? Believe it or not, Joe, I'm going to pick a few flowers. That would be the greenhouses over there. Me, I ain't interested in flowers. And over this way, a small house where Gordon lives, I should think. Hey, there's a light on. Yeah. And now let's see how quietly I can open the door. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very quietly, but very bad manners. It is, it is. Oh, don't we mind me. Hey, Mr. Temple. Yeah, I know. Shh, shh. get a bit Oh, Laura, you should be in the house. Whatever would the police do if they find out you've been gallivanting around the countryside? What will they think when they find out you've been? I was here all night. No, Gordy, because when I got here, I stopped and touched the hood of your car. It was hot. Well, I, I think that's loose and run off to drive. Where to, Gordy? Who does not think you're the peculiar girl, Laura? What difference does it make where I do? I haven't just become rich because of the murder. As I have. How true. And not for the first time either. You knew about my first husband? And the roses? I knew, my dear. And you must be planning on... Giving up flower growing and helping you bear the burden of your great wealth? Mm-hmm. <laughs> to the idea. I shall perhaps grow very fine. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Let's go off me. No, this is where we come in, Louis. Good evening. Simon! Good evening. What the devil do you mean by... By not knocking, intruding, eavesdropping? I'm a cad. You'll never hear me call you Gordy. Better let go of Laura. All right. You can be so heroic about it. As a matter of fact, I'm here merely to give you a message. Really? From whom? Chester. Simon, the police have found him. He's in their hands at the moment. Simon, the police won't treat him badly, will they? Because he didn't kill Henry. He didn't kill Henry, and the police won't treat him badly. You see, he's dead. Oh, no. Poor old tap. You lack conviction, Mr. Ashenden. I lack interest. After all, what was Chester to me? More than you realize, perhaps. You see, he was shot to death in front of Louis and me. He had been in the house when Henry Kane was murdered. He knew who the murderer was. I still lack interest. You shouldn't. Before he died, Chester passed that name on to me. He did? He did. Is that why you're waving a gun about? I just want to be sure. 
Listen, I don't care what Chester said. If he told you I'm a retained, he, he, he was lying. That's it. Lying. Gordon, please, put that gun away. No, Gordon, don't put the gun away. But stop pointing it at me. You might try another direction until the police arrive. Another direction? Who? Mrs. Haynes, of course. You see, she happens to have killed both her husband and Chester. Simon! Oh, dear. Oh, my. And for oh. heaven's sakes, don't faint till later. So in the middle of the night, we're sitting in a restaurant. This adds up. It certainly does. Laura Kane interrupted me earlier tonight, and I never got to the dessert. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Templer, I know the cops have locked Mrs. Kane up, which, personally, I think is a waste on account of how she looks. But look, I can't believe she killed her husband in the butt. But she did, Louie. Yeah, I'd like to ask you how you know. Only I don't want to stay here till breakfast. It's very simple, Louie. Yeah? Her motive is obvious. She was afraid Kane might divorce her. Therefore, she killed him and hoped to inherit his money. Uh-huh. And the roses? An attempt, and rather a clever one, to direct suspicion at Gordon. She even put on an act with Chester about the roses. Ordinarily, if Chester hadn't decided blackmailing her would be more fun, he'd have testified about the roses routine and helped convict Gordon. Yeah, 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 but how... Now, excuse me, but I think any minute the sun is going to rise. How did you know? Whoever murdered Chester had been eavesdropping and knew that Chester hadn't been given the opportunity to tell us the murderer's name. Yet when I suggested Chester had told him... Uh Aha, Gordon got scared and started waving a gun. So you knew he was innocent, and that left... Mrs. Kane, a lady whose love was not at all like a red, red rose. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint... The Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us who live in the United States are aware of the material values of American life, our factories and machines and luxuries. But there is another side to American life, a side made up of spiritual values. Our country was founded upon faith in God. In the Declaration of Independence, it states that men were endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Thus, religious faith is part of the very foundation of American democracy, and one of our most precious national heritages is freedom of worship. Without faith, the family and the community become unstable. Without faith, the individual denies himself the peace and guidance of religion. The doors of your churches and synagogues are open to you. The freedom to worship as you please is yours. And so America's religious organizations invite you to find yourself through faith and to come to church this week. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the same. Good night. enjoyed our latest adventure with the saint and don't forget we'll be back tomorrow with the brilliant tony hancock hancock's half hour going live at 5 p.m gmt as i mentioned earlier we've got a supporter page patreon.com forward slash brett's all time radio show please check it out and please join us i'd love that thanks for listening i'll be with you seven days a week each and every week and i'll see you tomorrow on brett's all time radio show love you bye